Hello and welcome to the N64 Beta Project. This is a show where we take a look at the unreleased games, tech demos, prototypes and mods and see if we actually missed out on some great games with them not being released. In this episode we've got something a little bit unusual. Generally with the N64 sequels didn't tend to be cancelled. However in this episode we do have a sequel. Let's take a look. Now before we look at what could have been, it's important to go back and remind ourselves of the original Glover which was released across the world during 1998 on the N64 and a year later on PC and PlayStation 1. The game was developed by Interactive Studios and published by Hasbro. Upon its release, the N64 version received generally positive reviews, many stating that the game had great graphics, a wide range of music and even though it was challenging to control, it had an interesting game mechanic and offered something totally unique to the console. When the PlayStation 1 version was ported a year later, it couldn't have been more of a different story. The reviews were terrible, and many noted that the graphics were inferior not only to the N64 version, but to other PlayStation games in general. To sum up the port, GameSpot stated at the time of its release that the game had lost its soul in the transition away from the N64. Regardless, the game actually sold fairly well and so a sequel was planned and put into production simply titled Glover 2 and it was announced by Interactive Studios as having an expected release date of mid-1999. The game was set to be released on the N64, but a Dreamcast and PlayStation versions were also planned to follow a year later. Now if you're a regular viewer of this show, you'll remember the video where I covered Dragon Sword 64 and also the episode of Frogger 2. Glover 2 was also by Interactive Studios and I'm sad to announce that it was yet another cancelled N64 game by the same studio. So with the game's development in full swing, there was a bubble about to burst. The dot com bubble. You see Hasbro who owned Interactive Studios went on a purchasing spree in 1998. They snapped up Microprose and Avalon Hill for a combined $76 million. With a huge amount of resources now at its disposable, their revenues increased 127% which made them a cool $23 million in profits for 1998. Hasbro had grown so fast they were now the third largest game publisher in the world within three years of them founding the gaming side of the business. The problem started in 1999, when for the first time in over two decades they posted a loss. A big loss. $74 million of a loss. The company set about shutting down studios, many of which had games in development, and Glover 2 felt the icy cold glove of Hasbro. No pun intended. By 2001 Hasbro Interactive was sold to Infograms. So with Glover 2 cancelled, we began a long wait. It wasn't until 2010 that NES World recovered a playable prototype cart of Glover 2. As you can see here, the cart was labelled simply as Glover but what it contained inside was a 60% or so completed version of the game. Team Carrot, the messiahs of N64 beta games, acquired the cart and dumped the ROM, then putting it online in October 2011. The game is now playable using a flash cart such as the EverDrive 64, which is what I'm going to be using to play on a real N64 console, or you could use a ROM in any N64 emulator. Turning on the game, you'll be greeted by a lack of a title screen. The game starts with a wizard away on a fishing trip relaxing. This tells us that the game is taking place almost right after Glover 1 had finished and you should instantly notice that the graphics are very similar to Glover 1, albeit a little sharper and some better quality textures. When you start up the adventure story mode you begin with a pretty cool tutorial level. You are sent off on a fetch quest to find ingredients from the garden to make a special soup which is being mixed in the kitchen. Anyone who played Glover will instantly feel at home but for newcomers to the series, it would have acted as a gentle introduction to how to use objects you come across and how to play with your balls. And yes, I hope that will be the only ball playing joke I make in this video. After you've gotten to grips with the controls and found all the ingredients, the story really begins to take off and it turns out that you've actually been making a magic spell and cross stitch has been unleashed and has stolen the wizard's book of spells. Glover must travel across many lands and unique worlds to put back together the wizard's spell books so that he can defeat Cross Stitch and restore order to the world. As I mentioned previously, the game looks fantastic. As a natural lover of platforming games on the N64, this looks right up there with some of the better looking releases. On the beta game, you can press the left shoulder button while on the game select screen to bring up the level select menu. There are quite a number of environments for you to explore, however these are just levels. 
The game is not being set up in a structured order as of yet, so anyone thinking this is a game you can play all the way through, like 40 Winks, will be disappointed. Needless to say though, taking a look at these levels is a great insight into the game design. The levels range is great, and when presented with the list you can start to form a picture about how the game would have progressed. There are also some boss levels which are playable, and these highlight what would have been some of the key moments in the game. My personal favourite is this giant robotic machine in the junkyard level. My only disappointment is that his movement doesn't appear to have been finalised, so it's quite quick to learn his attack pattern and how to get hits on it. There are also some alternatives to the platforming levels. In this beta level we're playing on the minecart. The controls are shown on screen, however again this appears to be very early in the development as there is no need to jump over the gaps on the track and there are no enemies or hazards to slow down your process at this stage. For me personally, one of the most interesting things about this prototype is that there is already an easter egg in it. In the main hub menu simply go to the television screen by the N64 console and punch the screen. This will begin a secret mini game of a Space Invaders clone. Speaking of mini games, there is also a Gambler's Den level and upon entering there are some rather cool mini games for you to play. Jump on this table and you can begin a game of snap against your opponent. It's near impossible to lose a hand as the speed is quite slow. In the same area, you can also jump on the pool table and have a quick game of single player pool. The ball physics could have been done with more work but it's still totally playable. These are all the single player modes but the game was set to feature a multiplayer mode. The multiplayer levels are accessible from the level select menu but when you start the game it will instantly tell you that the game is over, however from this screen it appears it would have been an arena type game. There is also this level which appears to be some kind of race which possibly would have been a multiplayer level, however once you load this up there is no movement and you cannot begin the race. This prototype also has no in-game music. One of the most fondly remembered parts of the first Glover was some of its cool music tracks, but in this game all that's here in the sound department are some of the effects and character speech. It's funny, because speaking to characters in the game makes it quite clear they stole the idea from Rare in many of their games. When using the level select to go to some of the later levels it's clear to see that these only got to a very early stage of being worked on. In many cases the levels are missing textures and without playing previous levels there's very little context to explain what you would have needed to do. It's still interesting however to anyone who is interested in level design and you'd no doubt love to see how they set up these levels. With any prototype game we're always looking for ways in which we can find more or delve deeper into the game. With Glover 2 players of this prototype quickly found out that some of the secret codes from Glover 1 actually work on this cart too. It's also possible to pause the game and press the L button once again to bring up an in-game items menu. Now comes the tough part. Do I think we missed out on a great game here? Glover 1 is a game which many people have played with it being one of the earlier N64 platformers. The problem was that it quickly became apparent that the N64 was a hotbed for great platforming games. With Glover 2 due for release in mid-1999, it would have gone up against some pretty big competition. Castlevania was ready for release, Rare had Donkey Kong 64 lined up and Rayman The Great Escape was released in October. Going up against these games would have been suicide for Glover 2. All of these games were from established franchises and had been getting enormous hype from the gaming magazines. The only hype that Glover 2 really got was an early single page ad which you can see here. That doesn't mean that the game wouldn't have sold well. From playing this beta version of the game I can see enormous improvements over Glover 1 and even in these levels from midway through development I can see a lot of potential. I don't think it would have set the world alight if it had been released, but perhaps it would have gone on to become one of the hidden gems on the console after being overlooked when it came out some pretty stiff competition. So now it's over to you. What do you think about Glover 2 from what you've seen and heard? Would it have been a day one purchase for you being eager to find out the next part in Glover's storyline, or would you have saved your money and spent it on the bigger titles from Rare, Konami and Ubisoft which it would have been up against? As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and whilst you're there, why not hit the thumbs up button. Until next time.